Chinago Dynasty came a half a second away from defeating Infamous in Dallas and moving on to the finals, but they took the semifinal loss despite a last second dive from Oliver Lang, last year's top gun. Dynasty is the most successful team in the modern paintball era for a reason. They are amazing at every level of the game. They won the first two events last season, took second in Chicago, and ended up winning the overall season title. They will be a favorite here at the Mid-Atlantic Open. They have smart attackers, some of the best mid players in the game, and back players who are masters at shooting people off the break and closing points. Blake Garber will be pushing down the attack on the D side. Kyle Spicka and Alex Frazier will be moving down the snake side. One of the strengths of Dynasty is their versatility. They can move players around to suit whatever game plan they feel will be the most effective, with weapons like Brandon Short and Tyler Harmon. Ryan Greenspan can play everywhere, and since this field will see heavy guns off the break, Yosh Rao and Glenn Takamoto will be big assets. With their depth and experience, Dynasty could very well repeat their performance here last year and take the victory. Los Angeles Infamous had a triumphant return to the top in Dallas when they took the victory in the finals against a hungry Omaha Vicious. Infamous is a different team this season, as they have more depth and an obvious drive to be the best team in the world. Zach Wake was a man reborn in Dallas. He had 13 kills in the last game to help his team win the event, and he was awarded the finals MVP. The Bornstein brothers have added much needed depth to the squad, and Zach Patient is back from injuries that kept him from playing much of 2013. The three solid snake attackers, a versatile roster across the board, the momentum from the Dallas win, Infamous is the team to beat at the Mid-Atlantic Open. Drew Templeton, Callie Rudolph, and Nikki Cuba all stepped up at the last event, and Damian Ryan, one of the best players in the game, will be out to add to the 43 kills he chalked up at the first event. Infamous underperformed all last season, but they look to have a new hard mentality, which will continue to pay dividends if they can keep up their newfound intensity. Wow, big game here. Infamous and Dynasty about to throw down. Dynasty assured a spot in the semifinals, regardless of whether or not they win or lose this game. But Infamous fighting to avoid playing in that relegation match here. But it looks like it's going to be a uh, shock and Dynasty moving forward, unless our math is wrong. Rav, hey. what do you think about this game here, man? Hey, <clears throat> expect Infamous to lay it up, leave it all on the uh, on the grass here and go every point. They get they have to win this game for a couple reasons. One, if they think they are out, they gotta they gotta take this match to the next event. Yeah, and we talked about this. We have the ten best teams here. This is gonna happen all year long. Well, that's what was so. I was just gonna say that too. I totally agree with you because how crazy would it be for Infamous to win the first event and then have to play in a relegation match in the second event? But that just pro goes it, to show you how hard it is out it, here. Like our chaos. Who who would have expected them to have that 0 and 4? Whoever this was is gonna in, happen. Whoever was in Vegas that bet on our chaos to go 0 and 4 is a billionaire right yeah. now. <laughs> So Dynasty making a move, Oliver Lang up into the center. That's his spot, he loves that spot. And he's been doing such masterful paintball work out of there this year. And here comes Oliver Lang pushing forward. One player left alive, it's Callie Rudolph. And Oliver Lang is going to slow creep on him. And then slowly but surely come around and take him out. Nice work by Oliver Lang and the rest of the crew from San Diego Dynasty. Alex Frazier, two confirmed kills. One for Oliver, one for Yosh. And Blake Yarber clocks in and shoot Damian Ryan as well. So full team effort from San Diego Dynasty here in this first one. Alex Frazier, the early kill count leader for Dynasty. One point on the board for them, 18-31. Pretty quick first point. And uh, it's not what Infamous <laughs> wanted to happen here. Yeah, and, you know, we saw, you know, Dynasty played, you know, their first couple games, you know, yesterday. Uh, beat up Art Chaos. Uh, had a pretty close game with Shock um, this morning. You know, their game against the Ironman, the Ironman did a really good job of isolating Ryan Greenspan early, you know, shooting him out, getting him off the field. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, Oliver Lang as well, you know, come, trying to come up that middle of the field, you know, which really kind of helped uh, Ironman slow up Dynasty a little bit. But, you know, right now Infamous, you know, looked a little tough this morning. You know, they beat, they ended up, you know, uh, beating Art Chaos 7-3. to three. But, you know, that seemed like a really slow game. You know, I feel like... Uh, Infamous needs to kick it up into gear a little bit here. So, one hour early lead for Dynasty. We'll be right back after these messages. Iron Man Aftershock, 3-3. Three, three.
So as this tournament progresses here, how much different do Todd do you think are the game plans going to get? Do you think that as we move into Sunday, we're going to see that standard pocket play just continue to uh, to be the mainstay for these teams? Uh, I do. It's just again, it comes down to the timing. You know, like how quickly do they make the moves up the center? You know, a lot of it has to do with whether or not you shoot uh, that one wide guy on the break. If people go wide or not. You know, there goes. Uh, uh, Infamous breaks out to that Dorito one, gets in there alive. Brian Greenspan goes up the middle to that center can. He takes one in the chest, it bounces. And this is where we usually see Tyler Harmon second out to that Dorito one. Uh, Brandon Short and Alex Frage doubled up again uh, in that can. And that's their standard breakout all weekend. That's just, that's what they've been doing. And it's been working. It's forward. working. It's been working great. But the thing about Dynasty, though, is that though they you could they have that conservative breakout, they have been making awesome timing bump moves, man. They're they're not scared to get out. As soon as they see it, they're, they're getting out there and definitely moving up the field well uh, and moving up the center of the field particularly well as it looks like Ryan Greenspan is starting to chop up some bodies in the center as he gets another one. Link took out Zach Wake earlier. I think that's a two-pack so far for Ryan. Five bodies still left alive here for San Diego Dynasty as they're trying to put another point on the board. Looking real good. Only two players left alive here for Los Angeles Infamous is Nikki Cuba and Bobby Villas. Glenn Takamoto filling out to the Dorito one. Nikki Cuba getting shot in the loader. He's going to have to run off the field. Bobby Villas, too much pressure from San Diego Dynasty. Bobby's a little not too happy about the end of that point there. Come on, guys. I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> it's game over. So Kyle Spicka, slow walk, that flag in, and checking himself out. Didn't need to do it, though. Point was conceded by Los Angeles Infamous, and Kyle Spicka got that last kill on Bobby Villas. Five players alive for Dynasty, so perfect point for them. 16, 56 to go. You're looking at Rusty Glaze in the pits with his prodigy, Blake Yarber. Well, uh, that's the reason Blake got on the team is uh, they needed a body, and Rusty had said, hey, I know this insanely good pump player. Uh, his name's Blake Yarber. He's a beast, and I think he could be really good one day. So he they did the same the thing team. I did when I made a mistake and said, hey, Avalanche, I got a player I think we should have on the team. His name is Rusty. <laughs> 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 we all make some mistakes. <laughs> do you remember that day, Todd? Yep, sure do. <laughs> <laughs> now he's, uh, like I said, he, he loves paintball. I mean, like, when we picked him up, that kid was running around uh, SC Village with a hat with a helicopter on it. And I told him, I said, hey, we're going to give this kid a, a tryout. And they said, you've got to be kidding me. The kid with the helicopter hat? And I'm like, yeah, he's good. He's a good player. But he was. Yeah. So it worked out. Rusty's been, he was good early and then good for a long time. Yeah. And uh, decided to take the offer from Dynasty, came to him uh, when they needed a coach. And, you know, kind of he had it. At a lunch, I think it was Yosh, and uh, Yosh was like, hey, we would love for you to coach the team. And he was like, absolutely, and then came on with force and was like, all right, well, if I'm a coach, we're going to do things my way. And then he quickly turned Dynasty into the hardest working team in paintball. Uh, I remember Rusty was getting on me last year for that because uh, in the early part of last year, the Ironmen were grinding, 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 grinding. I mean, it was pretty ridiculous. And obviously, you know, uh, Moscow Red Legion, you can't count them out, Art Chaos and uh, Houston Heat. Those, those are teams that put in more practice time than anybody else. But uh, you go to a dynasty practice, they get there early, they stay late. And, uh, and then you know, the organization that Rusty has really brought and the game plans, the mentality. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of people don't know this, uh, even though it's been said by Archie, is that, that means the mindset that, uh, that X Factor used to win the World Cup, that was a little insight that came from Rusty Glaze. Say, treat every point, regardless of whether you got to have a penalty, as it's as an opportunity. So anyway, here we go. Into the point. Dynasty up by two. You're looking at Dynasty's back line right now. There's Ryan Greenspan and Alex Frazier doubled up in that stand-up. They did lose Blake Yarber early. He got shot, shot by Zach Patient. Five bodies alive for Infamous. So this is Infamous's chance here to try to get back in this match. They're down by two, making moves on the D side. Cali Rudolph. No one out on the snake side yet. Damian Ryan, Cali Rudolph, Brad McCurley, Drew Templeton, and Zach Patient on the field for Infamous. And Brad McCurley and Drew Templeton doubling up the stand-up can on the snake side of the field. Now you're looking at Dynasty's line. Heavy guns putting a lot of pressure. And Todd, guys carrying a lot of pain out there. You're saying that uh, Matt Sossman, how many pods did he have for your team? 15 pods. 15. 
Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just it's just that type of field. You know, people out here are just dumping pod after pod oh, after pod. Alex Crazy, awesome snapshot on Drew Templeton who catches one in his dome and has to take the walk. Brad McCurley, now only player in that stand-up. So now, there's Alex Crazy dead center of your screen. Nice snapshot by him to even up the body count as Blake Yarber got shot early, so the early advantage went to Infamous, but because of Yo uh, Alex Frazier, who is the kill count leader right now, three confirmed for Alex Frazier doing some work for San Diego Dynasty. Kelly Rudolph out there in the Dorito side corner for Infamous, got Zach Patient in front of him. Damian Ryan and Brad McCurley in the center towers for LA Infamous. Ryan Greenspan gonna bail out from that center can to the Dorito one. Tyler Harmon, no, I'm sorry, Oliver Lang Bumped out to that Dorito side corner. Four on four still right now. Neither team wanting to give up a body. Dynasty up two to zero over Infamous. And, and guys, <laughs> Infamous needs this win to stay out of that relegation game. I mean, like this this is important. Like they, they win this, they stay out of that game. They are not strangers to the relegation games. They had to play a couple of those last year. They won all of them. They didn't never never got bumped down to the challengers division. And that's but. based on if our math is, is correct up here. Yeah, we got to add a little asterisk to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Between the three of us. Yeah. So now Ryan Greenspan makes a move into snake or a D2. So Ryan Greenspan on your screen. Now shooting towards the inside. Cloud starting to roll in here. Perfect paintball weather. Not too hot, not cold, not raining. Though uh, the, the rain that dumped for days before this event uh, really made one side of this field pretty swampy, and even though it started out really nice, but quickly got degraded to the lake that it currently exists on one side of the field. That's the side Dynasty's on right now. Kind of deadlocked right now. Only uh, infamous, you know, making that push up, jumping into Dorito three, Zach Patient. Now on the outside. Kind of here on the field, what's going on right now. There's Zach Patient on the left of your screen in the small Dorito. Ryan Greenspan in front of him in the big Dorito. That's Zach Patient, number 88. Back, played well for Infamous. In Dallas played well early so far here. There's Alex Frazier shooting across the field towards the Dorito side. Zach Patient. In good position to put the pressure on Frazier. Frazier gonna have to live behind his gun or look to bail out of there, but Brad McCurley does have that snake side of the field locked off. Gonna be tough for Alex to make a bump should he choose to do so. And uh, really long point here is Dynasty not willing to give an inch, and they don't need to. It's, it's in Infamous' uh, best interest to really start looking for some moves here. Lots of time left, which is why they've played the way they have so far, even on the body count. Infamous doesn't want to give away some, you know, make a, try to get a little greedy on a move, give too much away. But here comes, this is what I was talking about, though. You know, so Dynasty, they're, they're oh, Ryan Greenspan just head checked away from one. But like I was saying, is that Dynasty, they are taking moves. When they're there, they take them regardless. Uh, but they're doing it very, very smart which is why they're 3-0 uh, right now. You know, Dynasty defeated Art Chaos 7-2 yesterday morning, and then they took Aftershock down 5-3, and then this morning they defeated the Ironman 5-4 in a nail-biter, and we are where we are currently. 11 minutes and 49 seconds to go. Looks like Alex Frazier's gonna dig out over a bunker. You're looking at Oliver Lang there, looking underneath the center. And fortress. he strategically didn't step in that puddle, that mud puddle. Frazier, he, Frazier saw it and w walked right around it. <laughs> Nobody picked him up on the way out there. So now he is in snake one. Dynasty's Oliver Lang. Here goes Alex Frazier now into the 50 snake. Uh, if you could hear that voice. That's Callie Rudolph, Rudolph over there in the Dorito corner. Kevin Rudolph might be about to get shot by Alex Frazier. I don't think, I, I don't think Frazier quite has the angle yet. You see Oliver underneath that center fortress. Ooh, so Frazier craftily making his way, the old salty veteran. 
Oh, Alex Frazier's just having a game right now. Two kills for him. Chalk another one up. That's the three pack for Alex Frazier. Slow and methodical wins the race over here on the snake side. And then one player left alive. Alex bumps up another bunker. Three on one right now. Just Damian Ryan left alive. And Infamous gonna blow the horn. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Wow, so it is not looking good. Hey, we got 11 minutes, man. Uh, yeah, so right now, 10 minutes, 40 to go. It's been all Dynasty, and you look at the man, that last point, Alex Frazier with the three-pack, walking off. Again, this game brought to you by Empire Paintball Key Action Sports, one of the major companies and driving force behind paintball's push forward here. And there's inside the pits, Infamous getting beat up by Dynasty early on. Still a lot of game left to play. And we will be back shortly here to see if Infamous can get back in this match. Now they have all the tools that they need, but it's been a really tough event for them so far. Currently they're sitting one and one and one. <laughs> so we'll be right back here. Don't go anywhere. They say don't be perfect, be clutch. Being clutch is one of my biggest assets. You can rely on me to be clutch, and I rely on the vanquish. My name is Damian Ryan. I play for Team Infamous. The vanquish takes my game to another level. Big Nicky Cuba getting his boys up. Nicky had a pretty good game in uh, the first game that Infamous played in that smashing of Art Chaos to keep him in the tournament. And now, can they get this one back against San Diego Dynasty? The current kill count leader for the guys out on the field right now for Dynasty is Kyle Spickle with two. Oliver Lang's clocked in for one so far. So now on the breakout, four guns up. Initially, before Brad McCurley digged out in the center, Still three, but they lose. Infamous loses. I think that is Zach Patient trying to get out wide. They also lose Brad McCurley, so not looking good for Infamous at this point, Todd. Now, uh, Dynasty loses Oliver Lang, uh, trying to secondary out to that uh, Dorito one, but they do get Tyler Harmon all the way out there to the corner, and Spica makes it uh, out here on the snake side. Uh, Brandon Short now attacking up the middle of the field. Just two bodies left alive for Infamous. Damian Ryan and Drew Templeton, but Drew Templeton gets shot in the goggles. So a quick point for Dynasty is going to make it a 4-0 game right now. And, you know, if if we're going to see, you know, a potential, if, if, if Infamous loses, you know, th this point spread's being pretty bad. If there's any sort of tiebreaker, you know, this point spread could definitely hurt Infamous right now. And it's right, right when like you said, with 4-0, they, they need to get, put some points on the board hey, real fast. I agree with you, Rab, but just I just kind of want to say that, you know, when... You know, every game, every single game, everyone else is watching. And right now, if you look at the, the scores and the games that Dynasty has played, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a bold stretch here to say they're the favorite at this event. Right now, absolutely. The way they're playing, and like if, if you're watching them, their breakout is the standard. Doubling, one guy out, left or right, every now and then, you can figure it out. But, it, but the, it's what they're doing after the breakout that's making Dynasty special at this event. They're not making very many mistakes. Uh, personally, they're playing well, uh, so individually. And then collectively as a team, um, just, you know, they've got different guys stepping up. And they're just looking really, really good right now. But no surprise, they won this event last year. So there's uh, Infamous. Bobby Avilas, Vicky Cuba, Corey Bornstein. Corey Bornstein's beard's talking to Nikki. Blake Yarber, Alex Fragey, Oliver and Ryan on the screen right now. Yeah, I hope, uh, hope you guys got your fantasy rosters. Make sure to sign up early. You can get your rosters in up to 8 a.m. on Friday morning. And uh, I got my roster in. I got Corey Bornstein on my team. No kills for him so far, though. Come on, Corey. And M able sponsored by Empire Paintball. And able to win a vanquish so you know shouts out to empire paintball big supporter of infamous and kicking down a vanquish for the winner 
Oh, the fantasy competition. So yeah, it looks like Infamous makes it out wide into the Dorito side corner. Brian Greenspan gets shot on the launch. Here comes Bobby Avilas up the middle. And you got your you got elimination, Corey got a kill. So there you go, Matt. Yeah, Corey. Well, I figured, you know, Infamous has a lot of uh, confidence in both the Bornsteins, and Corey played real well at the first event. I figured, you know, a lot of back bunkers. Corey's a great snapshot. I figured, you know, he was relatively inexpensive for I thought, I thought the damage that he would be doing. Yeah, it looks like Corey Bornstein just got another kill. I think he shot Oliver Lang trying to fill out as he was in that Dorito 1 playing heads up. Bobby Villas in the middle. Here comes Zach Wake. He's going to go into the snake. Nikki Cuba pounding on Yosh Rao. Just Fragey and Rao left alive for Dynasty. Zach Wake now in snake 1. Shooting across the field. Bobby Avila still up there in the middle. Nikki Cuba wheeling and dealing. That's Zach Wake, number 23. Dallas Finals MVP, Bobby Avila's up above him right there. Setting your screen in the A, looking underneath towards the snake side. There goes Alex Fragey. Dallas MVP was Zach Wake, who's in the snake right now. Looks like Infamous is going to get one and a perfect point for Los Angeles Infamous. And that's what you need to do, get that point. 8.33 left, plenty of time left. Yeah, good. Uh, the Bornstein stepping up, four confirmed between the two of them. Two for Corey, two for Jason, and Bobby Avilas. Got a shot on Ryan Greenspan early in that point. Nicky Cuba hobbling out there. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, He'll come well right back him. out. Yeah, he will. You'd have to saw that leg off for him <laughs> not to come out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So do we have a game? Well, Infamous finally puts on the board. Three points separate these two teams, and we will be right back after this commercial message. Rusty Glaze talking to Tyler Harmon. Talking over some plays here before the start of this next point. 8.26 to go in this last match of the morning's competition. And then we have a whole set of the afternoon bracket coming at you here from the 2014 PSP Mid-Atlantic Open. And Maddie Marshall alongside Todd Martinez and Steve Rabikoff. First up in the afternoon bracket, we have Boom taking on Red Storm. And then we have VCK taking on Top Gun Union in the Challengers Division matchups. VCK played very well at the first event, weren't able to earn the right to play in the Champions Division, but for the first event in the Challengers Division, not bad at all. Uh, Red Storm struggled, and so did Boom. Top Gun Union uh, lost Ryan Martin, who played with them last year, as he got picked up by Impact. And then we have the Chal uh, Champions Division in the afternoon, Damage Crew, X Factor, Impact, and Vicious. And we're gonna lose Todd, and he's gonna have to go down and do some coaching duties. Yeah, got to get two wins today ourselves. Make it on a Sunday. Hey, it can be done. It will be done. I like <laughs> that. I don't like Grumpy Todd. <laughs> <laughs> we saw, I saw Grumpy Todd storm up here to grab his backpack yesterday. He didn't even say hi or goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed his bag, went right down the stairs. You just heard stomping and stomping on the grass, and that was it. Stuff exploding. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even say hi to him, give us a head nod. <laughs> <laughs> so can Infamous get a put, a put another one on the board here? They double up that back center bunker. Nicky Cuba backing up off that bunk, trying to get a better angle, hops back in to his spot. Referee scouring over Bobby Avilas. Looks like Bobby's clean. Uh, four players alive for Dynasty. Three for Infamous is Wake. Got shot by Brandon Short and Bornstein. Jason Bornstein got shot by Tyler Harmon. Bobby Avilas tries to make a bump out of that can back to the snake side corner and gets picked off. Brandon Short makes a move through the swamp into the snake side corner. Kyle Spicka gets bounced. Nope, that ball broke. Kyle Spicka's going to walk off the field trying to come across into the 50 snake. So three bodies left alive now for Dynasty. Two bodies. Two bodies. Just two bodies. Just Nikki and Corey Bornstein left alive for Infamous. 
who's now got four eliminations. So I see a long point coming on here. As Dynasty going to dig in the back. Well, that's going to play to Dynasty's favor if a long point starts to go down. And, and it looks like it will, Todd. I totally agree with you because Corey and Nikki are the only players left alive for Infamous, and they have to push forward. They can see this point that will put Dynasty up by four, but they might think about doing that. It's only three players left alive for Dynasty, so maybe let it play out a little bit and see if uh, either Corey, who's already got four kills, uh, or Nikki maybe can sneak a kill in real quick and, uh, and try to put one on. Four to one, approaching the six minute mark. Nikki Cuba dueling it out with Brandon Short. Corey Bornstein in that three to one. Both players trying to get a shot in on somebody to open up the game, but Dynasty not really playing anybody. Short sitting in that corner. Glenn Takamoto just and they're, and they're willing to just let this hey, run out. They're 4-1. They know that they're going on. They don't have to go anywhere. This is the spot you want to be in. You want to be up three points, only looking at two bodies with three guys. That's fine. That's perfect. You know, you still got some pain on your back and time to try to burn off here because even if Infamous does win this point, they're still down by three, and they just won't have very much time to come back. And here comes Brandon Short. Brandon Short makes his move to the snake. Maybe he can get a drop one in on Nikki. So it's going to be Nikki Cuba versus... Brandon Short over here on the snake side. Nikki's trying, man. You can see he really wants to make something happen. Oh, did he get a shot on Brandon? Nope. Oh, oh he got that one. Nikki Cuba doing work for Infamous. Owns Brandon Short in a snapshot in battle. Twice and he put him on him, different angles, and finally got the one to break. That was a great move. So Nikki Cuba may have stepped up here, but Nikki is out of paint. Nikki has no more paint left. I think he just shot his last ball. And Corey Bornstein just got shot. Uh, so despite Nikki's best efforts, it's going to be tough here. He's going to have to move up, man. He's really got to be careful. He knows he's out of paint here, and he needs to win this point. And it's just, so it's just Nikki. Maybe he can find a, a, a pot on the ground or hope to God one of these snapshots hits. But he's in a bad spot, man, because Tyler Harmon, Glenn Takamoto, and then just, then you can see the frustration. So Nikki was balling it up over here, but it didn't matter because Corey got shot. And uh, Nikki was out of paint, so Nikki's going to hobble off. So even despite whatever sort of nagging injury Nikki has, still got it done here in that snap shooting fight against Brandon Short. So, you know, Dynasty did what they needed to do. They took out their shovels, dug holes, and uh, jumped in them, filled back on top of themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got the three point lead. I'm, you guys come and get us. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, with only four minutes and 32 seconds to go, Dynasty putting up another big score here. Really the only team doing that at this event. They're definitely the favorites. Looking like they will advance, uh, or they're definitely going to advance and possibly win this tournament. We will see. They won it last year. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly. She's down in the pits with an update from the Challengers Division. Hey guys, yeah, I wanted to bring you an update from the Challenger field. The first uh, Challenger game over there was Thunder versus Moscow Red Legion. Uh, the Russians actually got a penalty during the first point, enabling Thunder to get the first two points. And then once they were out of the box, they got seven consecutive points to close it out completely. The final score was Moscow Red Legion 7-2 to two, winning that one and going undefeated so far in the prelims, proving that if they can kind of stay away from those penalties, they should be bumping back up to the championship. Champions bracket. That's all I've got now, but let's return to this match. So we are going to say goodbye to Steve Rabakoff as he heads off to do some duties for GI Sports, the company that he helps run. And uh, right now, four minutes and 32 seconds to go here. <sighs> Todd, I don't know, man. I don't think Infamous is going to be able to do it. I mean, that's not really a bold claim, to be honest, because this field long points and infamous has only been be able to put up one so far so they'd have to triple that or you know they have to put up yeah, well they have to quadruple that to put up four points just to even tie it up so look for an aggressive push here from infamous they spread the field out wide no pocket play from them damian ryan running up in the center he gets cut in half but it looks like uh, alex frazier gets taken out yosh is going to take the walk too this is what infamous is needed though they lost a body they have the advantage right now because they made it out wide so now drew templeton in the snake and trying to, he's going to have to push forward. As soon as he's got his guy in, he's got to make his move because they need to score, score a series of one-minute points here. And here comes 
Infamous on the offensive. Drew Templeton pushing up to that 50. He's got Brad McCurley inside with him. But Callie Rudolph gets shot off the Dorito side. Only one body left alive on the Dorito side for Infamous as they lost uh, Damian Ryan early. So three on three game right now, but Infamous with the position over here on the snake side of the field. But if Drew Templeton can get a shot in on the back of Ryan Greenspan, that might open it up a little bit. And here comes Brad McCurley onto Dynasty's side of the field in their wedge. Can he get a shot in on Oliver Lang? And here comes Ryan Greenspan up the middle. Looks like he might trade out with Brad McCurley. He does. Good move by Ryan Greenspan. Two on two right now. Drew Templeton still in this 50 snake. Trying to put paint across the field at the two bodies left for Dynasty. They're in the Dorito side corner and Oliver Lang just jumped into the Dorito one. So working hard is Drew Templeton as he crosses all the way over into Dynasty side of the field. Oliver Lang goes on the offensive. He jumps into the Dorito two to help protect him. But there goes the Dorito corner. Just Oliver Lang left alive. It's a two on one. Gotta be smart if you're infamous closing this last point out. And Oliver Lang gets shot. Drew Templeton going to run and grab that flag. So good breakout there by LA Infamous to be able to get a couple kills early. Yeah, nice work by Drew Templeton. Had no choice. Had to push forward and was able to get it done. Awesome crossfield shot, too, as Drew Templeton gets uh, two confirmed for him. Uh, Brad McCurley was doing some work for Infamous as well, uh, but Ryan Greenspan was able to bunker him out and stop that run. So Infamous going to go up, or I'm sorry, going to put a point on the board. Now we got ourselves a three-point game with two minutes and 30 seconds to go, and that is going to be difficult. Virtually, in, virtually impossible. Look at the game matchup here. You, know, you got to give Dynasty the advantage. Uh, in the way that they're playing this game right now. Man, they're attacking. They're one of the only teams that, though they have conservative breakouts, still able to get out wide and, uh, and really use that awesome timing that they have. Um, you know, the defending ability of some of their back players able to play that scramble paintball. Now, Infamous did win the last event, so they rank real high in a lot of these abilities too, clutch. Uh, but, you know, Dynasty, the way they're playing right this second and the way Infamous has played this event, it just, they haven't really been able to, to, uh, to, to to play as well as they did at that first event. So Infamous most likely going to have to play in a relegation match. We're going to be right back after this. Oh, get out, sucker! <laughs> Bye, sucker! Night, night! Look at this split screen breakout infamous on your right, Dynasty on your left. Both teams, five strong. Penalties not played a factor here in this match. Dynasty just outplaying infamous right now. And heavy guns for Dynasty, but they lose Kyle Spica. And it looks like a major penalty gonna be on Oliver Lang. But wait a second. Here comes Damian Ryan down the middle of the field. Well, actually, no penalty. So it looked like Oliver called himself out got there and then went to and called himself out. I think the ref thought he was trying to move forward, so put the red back in his pocket. And then now Drew Templeton doing what he did last point, trying to close it out. And it looks like a quick one for Infamous. So this might change things a little bit because they scored such a quick point. And they're going to hang it up. So And then now a minor, it looks like, maybe on Dynasty. Might be a pit penalty. Maybe somebody came out before. You can't come out of that pit until the point ends and saw that flag over towards the pit sideline. So as Brad McCurley gets checked out on your screen, uh, see if that minor penalty goes up for Dynasty. It looks like Damian Ryan doing most of the work there for, uh, uh, for Infamous, three confirmed kills for him, two for Nikki Cuba. So yeah, so uh, Nikki Cuba and Damian Ryan combined for the five. And that gives Damian, the, so that's Damian's first kills at this event. So two of the top killers in the league uh, struggling this event, Todd, is uh, Damian Ryan and Konstantin Fedorov. 
two guys we see at the top of the kill count leaderboards every single event it seems like for the past two years really not playing much of a factor here at the Mid-Atlantic Open. Yeah, and you know, when those are your guys that really get the rest of your team going, you know, it's really tough to kind of get in a groove, you know, uh, you know, as a whole. So, you know, we see Drew Templeton out here just running and gunning to the snake with Brad McCurley right next to him, you know, trying to get it done, you know, finally opening up the field a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, only a minute and 50 seconds left, two point spread right now. You know, that uh, Dynasty is going to get that minor. Um, I think it might have been for talking or something, walking off the field. I but think it was a bench penalty. Well, that, okay, well, it makes things a little interesting now. So you were talking about how impossible it looked that Infamous was going to be able to put up that many points and have to score four points in order to tie it up here with about four minutes left. But because they've now put up a couple real quick ones, way under a minute, we're now sitting at, a five to three score with just shy of two minutes to play. And now Dynasty has to start with four. So if Infamous can whip those guns around and get two kills here and score another quick one uh, within 30 seconds or so, that would give them enough time to potentially tie this game up, Todd. You know, it looks like they did give that major because Dynasty only started with two bodies no. or three bodies. Did they start with three? Yeah, Dynasty started with three bodies, but there's only one penalty up on the board. And it's a minor. So maybe Dynasty just uh, didn't get a body out in time, which is another mistake potentially. I'm not really sure, but it, I think you're right. They only started with three bodies, Oliver Lane, Yosh, Rao, Ryan Greenspan, but they made it, all made it out alive. Uh, Ryan Greenspan, the kill count leader for the guys on the field right now, between three of them, six confirmed for Ryan Greenspan. Getting me some fantasy points. And Dynasty now making a move. Ryan Greenspan moving up the field, trying to lock down that D side of the field. Infamous getting destroyed, so wow. Uh, Todd. Yeah, Infamous the, trying to just, you know, push up the field too fast. Kind of got cut down through zones, got stuck in the open, and... And there goes their chances. So that, But that was an interesting little note there, is that Dynasty only started with three bodies, and they had a minor penalty, and they didn't get that fourth guy out. And then Infamous was on a massive power play, five on three. But Yosh Rao clocks in, kills Brad McCurley, kills Drew Templeton, and uh, Ryan Greenspan shoots out Damian Ryan, and... That's it, man. That is pretty much gonna. That's gonna do it. There's still a minute left, but now a two point, the three point spread. There's no way Infamous is gonna be able to put three points up in uh, under a minute. That is not going to happen. So Dynasty will go undefeated here in the prelims and looking like the best team thus far at this event. So with just a minute left to go, we'll be right back after this. Tuning in here to the 2014 PSB Mid-Atlantic Open to Matty Marshall with Todd Martinez. Thank you guys for your support out there in the internet world. We're doing all we can over here at PB. I know we had some technical difficulties. Apologize for that. This is a lot of moving parts here and uh, just, you know, trying to do the best we, that we really can to give you guys this show and uh, try to create something that's going to help paintball push forward. Now, a lot of work has been done the past couple years. The best teams in the world are now playing in the same league. We have statistics for the first time in ever in the history of paintball. It's a huge step forward for us and uh, bringing all this to you in HD. Zach Wake loses his gun. Dynasty loses a body quick and uh, they get Frazier out of the box. And so now it looks like we are going to have 45 seconds left. Here comes the push from Infamous. They lost a body as well too. Dynasty only has two players left alive, though. Oliver Lang and Glenn Takamoto, oh, four for Infamous. And Zach Wake made it to the snake on the break, but took a fat core sample, so he can't do anything. Bobby Avilas has to come behind him, but Glenn Takamoto gets shot. Just one body left alive. Here comes Nikki Cuba. He's going to wear out Oliver Lang. But does anybody realize how much time is left on the clock? Zach Wake's trying to put his gun back together. No need to. Corey Bornstein finally realizes what's going on. He's going to run and grab the flag. Poor Zach Wake down there. 
Got his gun in a million pieces. But Corey <laughs> Bornstein with the heads up play. Got to run and go grab that flag and take it in. So only 9.4 seconds left on this clock. And Infamous going to get another point, but just not going to be enough. Dynasty going to go 4-0 here in the prelims and secure themselves the top seed going into Sunday's competition. So let's talk real quick, Todd, about this afternoon bracket as it looked like X Factor, or didn't look like, X Factor did go 0-2 uh, in their matches uh, as they lost to 187 Crew 5-2. So they're looking at a triumph in San Diego Dynasty and Kyle Spick in the pits. So X Factor lost to 187 Crew 5-2. 187 Crew earning some respect, beating the world champs who won the 2013 World Cup. Uh, Vicious took damage, or di uh, tied damage and then Vicious also uh, lost to Impact. So you guys went, Todd, your team went 0-1-1 one, one on the day. Impact, they stepped up and defeated 187 Crew in a blowout 6-1. to one, And then they also beat you guys. So Impact is 2-0. and oh, And then Damage was 1-0-1. One, one and, um, one, zero and one. So it's another one of those crazy <laughs> brackets. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to wish you the best in the afternoon. And wow. But before we get to those games it's going to be boom taking on red storm that is the next game coming at you guys after a short lunch break and then it's going to be vck and top, top gun union these are challengers division games seeing how those things are shaking down and then we head into that awesome afternoon bracket in the champions division so thank you guys again for tuning in here to the pba webcast of the psp's mid-atlantic open the second stop on the tour next up is going to be chicago in late june at the legendary cpx sports and they also have an amazing big game coming up, a scenario game, the Living Legends, which has literally become a legendary game. And it's, it, you know, that's going to be uh, so much fun. So if you're in that area, you definitely want to head out and check it out. So let's check in before we sign off to Lauren Kelly with the Triumph and San Diego Dynasty down in the pits. I am down here with Oliver Lang from Dynasty. Congratulations, you guys are undefeated in the prelims, the only team to do it. Now, I want to ask you a question. I know there are a lot of blind spots on this field layout, and I saw both you and Infamous using bounce shots a lot. Can you explain where those are best used on the field? Well, I mean, quite frankly, there's blind shots all over the field, and there's bounce shots all over the field. It really depends on the situation of where they are and where you are. And uh, quite frankly, sometimes you don't even know that you're shooting a bounce shot or, you know, you're kind of cheating it, trying to make a move, and you find one of those blind shots to, to get a guy in. So, you know, it's partial luck, it's partial skill, it's, you know, it's rolling the dice, it's a little gambling. If you notice that someone is shooting a bounce shot at you, what's your best strategy to get away from it? Yeah, you know, just hope that uh, you just got to suck in really tight and hope that they, uh, that they don't get you. <laughs> you are the only team to go undefeated in the prelims. What do you think other teams are having a problem with on this field layout? Well, I mean, we're pretty good. <laughs> and uh, I think more so than anything, you know, regardless of the field layout, whether it's faster or slower field layout, quite frankly, I don't like this field, okay? Um, the difference is, is we're a team, and we're different than any other team that's out here because we are a real team. And uh, we play a game, whether it's a fast field or slow field, like a team. So it doesn't matter the field, we're gonna play that same way across the board. And uh, quite frankly, there's no way to stop it. And at the end of the day, if you want to play like that, it's going to take lots of years. Well, you guys definitely played as a team. Great job this weekend. After the lunch, we will be going into the divisional matches, starting with Boom and Red Storm. So stay tuned. So what a crazy day of paintball. It seems like that's the same story every single time you come to one of these PSP events. It's what you're going to get when you get the 10 best teams in the world playing against each other. So. We got a whole afternoon of paintball coming at you, so do not go anywhere and let your friends know across your social networks that the PSP Mid-Atlantic Open Afternoon Champs and Challengers Division is about to go down. Man, it's been such an awesome tournament so far. Can't wait to see who's going to be making it to Sunday. We'll be right back after a short lunch break. Thank you guys for tuning in.